is the directory of a dream life 50 plus and I'm your host Marsha Ogden. Here's a snippet. Got to yeah. keep on top of it. I will always have to be vigilant around my weight and I think yeah. too many people that diet think that it is for a moment in time. Yeah. I could do this and I could do it for a few weeks and I'll get to that milestone event. Yeah. You've got yeah. to keep on top of it. I will Lovely to have you here. This podcast is definitely for you if, like me, you're over 50. But again, like me, you're not done yet. So once a week, we'll have a chat about topics that are dear to our hearts. As we hurtle towards this new chapter in our lives, we'll talk about staying healthy, retirement, empty nesting, downsizing, all sorts of things. It'll be a little bit of education, inspiration and humour with a dollop of seriousness. But all the vocab and references will be stuff that we can relate to. Sometimes I'll have guests. Sometimes you'll just have to put up with little old moi. The directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is very happy to be sponsored by Organic Secrets UK Limited. With a mission to spread the word about natural relief from mental and physical conditions that stop us from living our best life, Organic Secrets is an online supplier of high-quality CBD and supplements. Hop over to www.organicsecrets.co.uk right after this podcast. There's also a link in the show notes. Hello and welcome to episode 61. I hope you've had a good week. As you know, we're working our way through the alphabet in series two. I know we did D last week when I spoke to the very lovely Debs Thomas in an episode called Dance, Just Do It. I hope you caught it. If not, you know where to go after this episode. Well, we're sticking with the letter D this week because D is also for diet. I'm on a diet. So in today's show, we're going to talk about what you feed your body, what you feed your mind, and how ultimately what you feed your mind controls what you feed your body. Whenever we hear the word diet, we do automatically think of a slimming diet and our constant battle to achieve the so-called ideal weight. But that word diet, it's become a joke, hasn't it? Especially on social media, you know. It's like the, um, like all the wine memes about wine being mummy juice. It's, it's the same thing with diets. You know, I had eggs for breakfast, boiled or scrambled, chocolate. I had chocolate eggs for breakfast. A balanced diet is a cupcake in each hand. They're funny, so they make you laugh, which is good. And they also make you think, oh, great, I'm not alone. But in another way, it makes you think, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like everybody else. But actually... We also know that diet really just means what you consume regularly. Whether we're referring to the food we eat, the company we keep, the information we expose our minds to. In life generally, I think you can pretty much replace the word diet with habit. You know, motivational speaker Jim Rohn famously said that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if those five people constantly talk about failure and their unfortunate existence, it's fair to say you're living on a diet of negativity. If your grandchildren never leave their bedroom because they're playing on the computer, you can say their minds are surviving on a diet of video games. And I'm not judging here, I'm just making the observation. Mine are just as bad as everybody else's. I'm just expanding our assumptions about the word diet. It doesn't necessarily mean a slimming diet and it doesn't necessarily mean the food you're eating. Nor am I speaking about this with any level of paper qualifications to back me up. It's just the ramblings and findings gathered from almost 60 years experience on this planet. Let's start with what we immediately think of when we hear I'm on a diet. How many times have we said that, heard that, or planned to do that? We could be on a diet for all sorts of reasons. It could be a slimming diet, 
Oh, we've had them all over the years, haven't we? The Atkins, I did that because you could carry on drinking wine and you just had to cut out carbs. Um, There's the Slimming World with the red and green days, although I think that's changed recently. Weight Watchers, I've been there too, obsessing about how many points are in everything and taking my little white calculator out to the supermarket, working out how I can save points for a couple of glasses of wine. We had the cabbage soup diet. Oh, Lord knows what that was about. <laughs> We've got meal replacement shakes, the 5-2 diet. Oh, the list goes on and on. But you may be on a diet because of a health concern like diabetes or an allergy or an intolerance. You might be following or have followed a fitness goal and been on a keto or paleo or protein or muscle building diet. You might be on a restricted diet because you've chosen to honour religious beliefs and are fasting for Lent or for Ramadan. Or you may be on a diet that excludes certain foods because you've chosen to honour your own thoughts and beliefs, like vegetarian or vegan. Oh, like me. Now, I think these last two categories are where the key lies, because they are diets that you've chosen to follow because of what you believe in what you tell yourself. And it's slightly off topic, but it demonstrates what I mean. As you may know, until a few years ago, I drank like a fish. I knew it wasn't a good situation, but I didn't believe I could be any other way because everyone I knew drank too. And I didn't really give it any consideration. I was only able to address the situation and succeed with changing it when I admitted there was a problem and found a way to change the way I thought about the alcohol. I chose to believe a different reality. It's like my mum. When she was a seemingly healthy 80-odd year old and a lifelong chocoholic and cakeaholic, she discovered she was diabetic. We didn't think she'd be willing or able to do anything about it. But she stopped eating cake and chocolate, well, with the odd little treat here and there, because she couldn't stand the thought of being in ill health. She didn't like it, but she didn't like the alternative even more. So she changed. So what I'm saying is, change is possible, but we expect it to happen overnight. And, as you heard in that little snippet, we expect a diet to be a moment in time, not a lifelong habit. We also hear a lot these days about allergies and intolerances. And whilst I think it's to do a lot with our lifestyle or processed foods or the environment, still a lot of people endure illnesses and discomfort because they haven't given any thought to the fact that it might be their diet that's causing their problems. And of course, we know that if we don't eat or drink, we'll die. So it kind of follows that we really are what we eat. Common conditions like sickness, stomach pain, bloating, cramps, gassiness, indigestion, heartburn, diarrhoea, constipation, headaches, even irritability and nervousness, anxiety. Whether you've been advised to stick to a certain diet or you're forcing yourself to go on, say, a slimming diet, it'll be hell, and your willpower will exhaust itself at the slightest hurdle if you don't change your beliefs about why you're doing it and the ultimate effect on your body and your health. In a few moments, I'm going to play back a little bit of that interview with Patsy Hansen and just listen to what she says about tricking yourself, lying to yourself and how that can work for you. So mostly, if we're on a diet, it's in reaction to what we've been told or what we've read. Or we know we don't like the way we are in some way. How we look, how we feel, or how we behave. It could be a health issue that can be turned around, you know, like like with my mum. It could be a bad habit that we've fallen into and need to turn things around. You know, maybe like me with the alcohol. It could be that we just eat too much too often. It could be that we drink too much caffeine. It could be that we binge eat when we hit a problem. 
These habits might have evolved over years. They're not going to disappear overnight, even though we hope they will. You know the feeling. I want to lose two stone. And then you get disappointed when three days into it, you've only lost a couple of pounds. You might have done what the doctor told you to do, but your health concern hasn't improved yet. We are too impatient. We need to train our mind to be happy and acknowledge small steps of progress. Whether it's the diet that we eat or whether it's the diet that we feed our mind. As I just mentioned earlier this year, just before COVID-19 in fact, I interviewed a lady called Patsy Hansen, the weight loss coach. She, through experience, has come to the same conclusion as me, that a habit won't disappear overnight. You have to work out what works for you and be patient. She agrees that we are all different. What works for me won't work for you. But you need to be open to suggestion and believe that change is possible. Here's a little snippet from that interview. And it did take another four or five years of having that first experience and then doing lots of my own research into no longer diets, but sort of ways of eating. Like a and way of life rather than I'm a on lifestyle. A diet. This is Absolutely. Yeah. And when I found the right formula for me, and it wasn't just about what I was eating, it was also about what I was thinking and what I was doing. When I found that click into place, I I mean, I was just on a roller coaster. I mean, I lost three stones in eight months. And some people might think, mm, that's a bit slow weight loss. That's not very good. My point is two things. I lost three stones in eight months. And I couldn't do that in 25 years. No, I, I dieted, yo -yo dieted yeah. for 25 years before I found this formula. Mm -hmm. And I was then able to lose it in eight months. Mm -hmm. but the best bit for me is, and the thing that I think makes what I do very different to what else is out there is that I've kept it off for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. There's no more yo-yo dieting for me. There's no more putting it back on plus some. It is over, Marsha, yeah. because I know exactly how to eat, what to eat, mm -hmm. and when to eat. Yeah. And I've cracked the formula for me, and don't get me wrong, and for your listeners out there, I really need them to know this. We are all unique individuals. We're unique beings. And so what works for me might not work for you. Mm. You have to invest your time and energy into your health and finding the formula that works mm -hmm. for you. So you can, I can give you the tools mm. and I can set the context, but you've got to find your magic formula of yeah. what foods help you lose weight, what foods help you maintain weight, weight what foods help you um, uh, gain weight, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. But yeah, I found my formula. It, clicked into place i lost this incredible and it, for me it was life-changing marcia yeah, because yeah. i was miserable when i was overweight yeah. so losing three stones was life-changing but i also am very clear if i take my eye off the ball i know that i will end up exactly where i'm coming from i'll end up right back there i will always have to be vigilant around my weight and i think yeah. too many people that diet think that it is for a moment in time yeah i could do yeah. this and i could do it for a few weeks and i'll get to that milestone event yeah. You've got yeah. to keep on top of it. And for me, I know I have propensity to put on weight. I think that I'm big boned and all that kind of stuff. I will go back to where I came from if I do not keep my hand on the ball. Mm -hmm. So to me, I've carved out a new eating lifestyle for myself and I have to take one day at mm -hmm. a time. Yeah. That's all I can do. Yeah. One day at a time, moving in the right direction for me. Yeah, I think taking one day at a time is significant and yes. this is what I always say about journaling that's what keeps me mm. on the straight and narrow so especially with eating mm. and because and my, my friends or some friends laugh at me because <laughs> I weigh myself every single day because I lost weight I got to my ideal weight and like you say it's so easy to let it just come back because you fall yeah. back into well I've, I've hit that now I can I, I'll monitor it and then you mm. weigh yourself once a week and you think I've put four pounds on oh yeah. stuff it it obviously doesn't work I'm not doing yeah. it anymore but if you Absolutely. weigh yourself every single day if mm. it's half a pound or a pound more you think oh that's yeah. not what I wanted to see I'll sort <laughs> that out today today In, today I will get it back to where it was yesterday Marshall, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, but you can read some things that say, nope, only weigh yourself once a week. Yeah, yeah. 
But I, I, I never get that. Now, no. I think the difference, Marsha, might be if you're in weight loss mode, you're trying to lose weight, maybe you should only weigh yourself once a week because you can become discouraged if you're on your journey and you know, you know, you're putting a lot of effort in and you've only lost a pound. Yeah. When, Typically, that's probably what all you are going to lose in that week. So you've only lost a pound. You think, oh, this thing doesn't work. I'm not doing this anymore. All that effort. Yeah. You know, I went out with friends and I, I stayed away from what they were eating. And look, I'm not even look. I can understand it. But when you're in maintenance, like you are, like I am, when you're trying to maintain your weight because you yeah, are where you want to be, thing, I suppose, you've got to yeah. keep an eye yeah. on it on a yeah. daily basis. I'm terrible. Yeah. I jump yeah. on the scales in the morning and in the evening. I oh, I don't do it in the I'll just do it in I'm the morning. Obsessed. <laughs> But I put it down in my journal every day yes. and make sure that it, Absolutely. It, it doesn't move from there. Absolutely. That's your responsibility. Mm. That's your health. That's your body. You know, so why not? Yeah. Monitor yeah. it. Keep yeah. on top of it. Don't let anybody else tell you what's the right way mm. to maintain your weight. Or, well, it's not a good thing to weigh yourself too often. Well, that might be for you, but this works for me. Yeah. You yeah. are a unique individual yeah. being. That's and right. And being individual, yes. I think it, it's got to be a mindset thing because, I mean, I've done it with drinking, with alcohol. If I went around saying, oh, are you having a glass of wine? I can't have one. I've given up alcohol. <laughs> it suggests that I'm going through a hardship. Yes. Whereas when it's, no, I have this because, to be honest, I hate the taste of alcohol and I decided to stop drinking it. It's no hardship to me at all one bit and I don't get tempted. And I think it's possibly the same thinking needs to, you need to yeah. find something that makes you able to think like that about food. You know, what you tell people around you in terms of well actually I don't even like the taste of it anymore mm. so that's mm. the reason why I don't do it anymore and just being quite firm with it so that people because sometimes the, those closest to you can be the worst mm. in trying to entice you to be the person that they need you to be and the person yes. they both want you to be yeah. that they've yeah. got in a lot, little box and they understand what that person is and their likes and dislikes and how to operate with them and if you Absolutely. change a part of you it forces a part of them to change a bit not like that so it's like they want you to be the same yeah. person so if you can be quiet you've got your little script ready and say well actually i don't like the taste anymore da, 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 and be quite firm about it hopefully you can hold your own one of the things i've noticed um particularly around weight loss and mindset is you can tell yourself something very similar such as well um i don't even like chocolate mm. But it doesn't have to be true, Marsha. Mm. It actually doesn't have to be true. You can suggest things to your brain and it does not have to be true. It will absorb it and it will take it on board. If you mm. tell it enough times and you act it through and you feel the emotion of it, you can actually put yourself off foods. You can actually convince yourself of things. And you know, it's a bit like the whole placebo thing. Mm. You know, people that have got a real condition and they've received a placebo, not the real deal. And they've actually willed themselves into receiving the solution and being, and, and you know, so, and it can happen. Yes, it's it, it will work. Yeah, it's in my because head. Because they I know want it, it yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. They want it to work That's so it, badly. Yeah. They're convinced they're the ones that receive the real treatment, not the placebo, because they're, they're, they're making themselves feel all the different experiences mm. and the stages that the doctors told them they're going to go through. So mm. in week one, you might feel a bit nauseous, and in week two, you'll feel a bit like this, and week three, you might be a bit tired, but in week four, you'll feel yeah. fantastic. Yeah. They make themselves feel all those emotions. Exactly. They're on the placebo. <laughs> so they're making them. So uh, what I'm saying, I'm trying to say, is that you can use your mind to assist you in your direction of travel. So whether that is to become teetotal, whether that is to lose weight and become healthier, you can tell your mind, I love all green foods. Mm. I just think green, oh, yeah. oh yeah. give me that kale. Like, <laughs> you can somehow get yourself, but it's understanding how to use the mind as your greatest mm -hmm. weapon mm. on your, you know, on your side, basically. And, yeah. it, and it is really, really possible. Yeah. Nothing needs to be true. Your mind doesn't know whether it's true or not you can be very, very suggestible and persuasive. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, use yeah. it as a great tool. You can, of course, listen to that whole conversation in episode 41. I'll put a link in the show notes. As I said earlier, I love what Patsy said about us thinking about going on a diet as a moment in time, forgetting that once we reach our goal, we have to maintain it. It's a lifelong diet. It's a lifelong habit. 
that we need to get into. If you are interested in changing your diet, whether it's the food you eat or the information that you feed your brain, then have a look at the link in the show notes that takes you to my best life journal. As you may know, if you follow this podcast, it's a glossy hardbacked planner that I created for our age. It's not too late for us to change. We could have another 30 or 40 years left, so that's worth doing properly, isn't it? Have a look at the link. The journal allows you to express your thoughts, concerns, wishes, plans, goals, and keep track on a daily basis. Because like I said in that snippet, it's far easier to correct any slight deviation than leave it a week or two and realise you've made quite a considerable slip. So have a look at that. And of course, if you've got any questions, just drop me a note to marsha at gurgleit.com. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Have an amazing week. Same time, same place next week. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and give us a review wherever you catch this podcast. And of course, do join us next week for another episode. The Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, Organic Secrets UK Limited. All the links are in the show notes. And you can catch up on all previous episodes at www.directoryofadreamlife.com. Have an amazing week and I'll see you next time.